Ballant groups take their name from Michael Ballant, who was a psychoanalyst in the 1950s, and he started uh, groups for GPs, uh, and these groups were designed to explore the uh, emotional component of the doctor-patient relationship and to help these GPs with um, those difficult patients, those heart sink patients, and to understand what might be at play in those relationships. The groups are experiential, reflective groups, a confidential space for members to discuss those cases that they can feel a bit puzzled by, a bit frustrated by, a bit lost, a bit stuck about, without the pressure to come to a clinical answer or the pressure to have an expected outcome. I get scared talking in groups in front of people, definitely when all eyes are on you. Um, and I sometimes get worried that my opinion is not the right opinion to have. So I definitely was a bit apprehensive about going. The point is not to be articulate or significant or I guess particularly stellar in what you say. The point is to just express what you feel and run with your thoughts. Knowing that I have that kind of safety net of the ball and group to kind of process these difficult emotions that you don't get to do on a ward round with your consultant because he's there for 20 minutes, um, that it will prevent burnout and again it will make me more satisfied with being a doctor I think. Normally we sit in a circle and it's kind of a group of about six people and two doctors with us who help lead the group and one person presents a case and we ask a few questions about it and then they sit out of the group and just listen while the others discuss the case. Rather than focusing on the clinical aspects, the medical details, there's the opportunity to think about that emotional component. And the presenter is able to explain that case and in turn members are allowed to ask a few questions but just about the sort of facts and the what was actually going on rather than delving too much into the emotional components themselves at that time. After that, the presenter is able to take a bit of a step back and to have a bit of freedom not to be involved in the discussion, have that pressure lifted from them. And the members uh, take up that, um, that role and discuss between themselves and uh, think a bit about what was going on in that case, what was the process there, why did the presenter feel that way, why did the patient feel that way. You're constantly having to address where the presenter might stand or where the patient might stand. What's this dynamic like? What does it feel like to be in that dynamic? The fact that it's in the context of a group discussion enabled me to appreciate other people's perspectives. I thought I was quite good at thinking about non-medical things about patients, but Ballant has definitely given me a broader scope from it. I think you know how to do it yourself, but then you watch other people and how they think, um, and you learn a lot from them. For me, Ballant is reflective practice, but on a completely different scale where you incorporate your emotions and your feelings and feel comfortable with them and therefore develop your empathetic process. I think. It is um, a performance almost and to think why, what part did everyone play in that performance in that relationship. At the end of that, the presenter is able to join back in again, contribute to that discussion, something they missed off something from the beginning or it's made them think about new things. But equally, they're able to actually just sit there and just sit with it and let the discussion continue, but feel a bit more involved again. By being able to be expressive and be congruent with your emotions, it legitimises them. It makes them sort of more concrete. For them to be sort of right there in front of you and for you to tackle them straight on is, I think, a very important skill for a doctor and for a clinician. The fact that it's in that safe and confidential environment, you learn so much about yourself and often about how other people act with patients or how other people think about patients that you know you could never have learnt by yourself. It makes the reflective practice much more dynamic and more importantly, much more fun. This level of emotional literacy is not really explored during medical school as well as it could be. So I think by incorporating reflective learning, reflective clinical work and this now reflective empathy will give us as future clinicians the best chance of doing the best for our patients. I've learnt by going to Barlet that evading all of these feelings and conditioning yourself to, to block them all off isn't necessarily healthy and that might eventually end up catching up with you. If you don't explore them and see them for what they are, they will affect your practice and the patients will know. And I think you as a clinician and in terms of your longevity and your happiness and well-being, that will also suffer. 
if you don't have this insight. So learning to be vulnerable in a safe space really does help facilitate this learning. I would love Ballant to expand within the medical school so that more people can do it and then conversations could be held with other students on placement and kind of a more balanced, more deeply thinking um, fashion. You have to protect yourself from the hardships of being a doctor. But you also have to get that balance right and engage with patients and engage with yourself. It allows one to appreciate uh, and to process different perspectives on compassionate care in a safe space. I think people should do Balin because anyone that wants to do any career in medicine would benefit from it. I feel like there's so much focus on clinical medicine that other parts get lost. I loved coming to Balin to be able to explore them because that's part of the reason I joined medical school to properly understand patients and I want to keep that with me throughout my medical career. Having to think about what patients might be thinking or feeling gets you practicing these skills. The patients will sense that. I think they'll be able to tell that we are these reflective clinicians that understand what's going on in our own minds and what might be going on for them a little bit more. And if we don't, then we'll have some faith to ask the right questions in order to get to the bottom of things. I think every future clinician has a potential to benefit from a group like this where you get to explore things and learn the skills that will ultimately benefit the patients.